Guess who's back? Back again. Prince Basile is meeting the lady. Gloria. Thank you, your highness. The ball is amazing. Everyone's excited to be. As Please stand up. Oh, I'm sure they are. Half of them because they're rooting for their hidden agenda to take effect tonight. But how can I blame them? But I am certain every court member wishes both you and the land the best. Um, oh please, excuse my bluntness, but do you genuinely think this to be true? What was your impression when you talked to them? I haven't talked to many of the guests, Prince, but I honestly believe they have the kingdom's interest at heart. I mean, even if it doesn't show. Fine. Have you tasted the food? We have brought spices from the Eastern lands, especially for this occasion. I am sure it's excellent, my lord. It looks like pieces of art and the smell... delicious. <laughs> are you sure? Would you like to try this? The small sweet rolls are a particular pride of our cooks. They are called softens, and baking them involves the help of an alchemist. That sounds fascinating, your highness. It is! That's why the taste is indescribable. It's neither sweet nor sour, salty nor bitter. It's unlike anything known to nature. Alchemically magical. Have some. Thank you, Your Grace. But a lady should watch her figure. He told you to have some. Just have some, Gloria. Surely a woman of your beauty doesn't need to worry about such things. You look as delicate as the morning breeze. You're too kind, Your Highness. Are you sure? Thank you, Your Highness. Maybe just a little bite. Oh, you don't need to call me your highness. I don't attach that much value to formalities. After all, I'm not king yet. Oh, I'm so sorry for the mistake, your highness. I, I didn't mean to imply. I, I'm truly sorry. It's nothing. Don't mention it. Oh, I won't mention it again if that's what you mean. I'm sorry. Oh my gosh. Relax. Exactly. I get the feeling you're very tense. Can we just chat casually? Of course, my prince. What would you like to chat about? Oh, wait, there's a little thing. There's There was a thing. It was glowy. Why did that affect my choices? Interesting. I don't know. Okay. If you know, if you play this game, let me know. Why was that a choice? <sighs> How do you like the music? The music is heavenly, my prince. You really think so? Why? I don't know much about music, but this seems like an excellent choice, my friend. Well, then maybe let's talk about things that interest you. Why don't you choose the topic? I don't know what you like and what interests you, Your Grace. Oh, I did it again. I didn't mean it. It, it won't happen again. Oh, don't bother. I mean, don't worry. I'm sorry, your highness isn't pleased. I didn't mean to upset you, my prince. I, I truly didn't. Somehow I wish you did. Will you please excuse me, my lady? You need to have a backbone. Of course, my prince. I hope you enjoy your evening. This is going to be a long night. So he wants someone who will speak their mind. Actually, Sophia might have a good chance. Gloria, you're back. So soon. Did the prince fail to meet your standards and you had to fend off all his attention and admiration? Did you dismiss him and take your leave? No. You're awfully quiet. What happened then? I know you used up all your eloquence on the prince. I'm sure he was super impressed. It's probably why he ran off so fast. He was too intimidated to stay in the presence of such perfection. And I'm glad you gave me this opportunity to point out, again, how great of an example are you are for me. Please enlighten me as to what the key pillars are to your... Will you shut up already? Enough. There was ever a time where I expected you two to focus. This is it. Sophia, stop with the pointless remarks. Want to show your sister? Then go prove you can do what she failed at. I never said I could, and I'm not sure whether... Oh, really? Not so sure of yourself suddenly? Stop whining, stand up straight, keep your chest forward, and maybe once your silly books will have their use. I heard the prince reads a lot. Yeah, he does. What does he read? 
I don't know, and I don't care. Just use it to your advantage. If it doesn't work, I'm not as pretty as your sister, so just flatter him a lot. You can do it. See, but that's their trouble, is princes are always flattered. You can... You're supposed to be nice. Like, you're supposed to be nice to everyone. But... Uh, oh, no. Lady Carmosa is displeased again. Your sister and I are going to have a little chat while you're gone. You concentrate on the prince. Be seductive. Go. Oh, I'll miss pleasant chat with Mother Gloria. I was so hoping for a good show. Just go. Oh, look at her. Good evening, Your Grace. Um, I hope I use the right style. Good evening, my lady. It is one of the conventional titles when you so addressing king, so no, not really. At least not yet. Oops, <laughs> looks like I blew it already. I wouldn't necessarily worry about that. I never understood all those subtleties myself. Nor cared for them, for that matter. I must be really lucky then, since I don't care much for titles myself, never seen the purpose. You do not. Quite a rare trait for a daughter of a noble house. And much more importantly, daughter of a powerful and ambitious lady. Don't forget about women with agendas, your highness. They tend to be pretty hard to overlook, anyway. Oh, is that so? Oh, yes. Quite an overbearing character, that mother of ours. She even made us wear these dresses, you see. Have you ever worn a corset this tight, my prince? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? No, I never had the uh, chance, opportunity. Oh, neither did I until today, but it doesn't really matter, because we all have our roles to play and tasks to fulfill. After all, a single knight can change the fate of many. Whole families, great houses, dynasties, etc. I can see you're quite upset, my lady. I'm only the youngest daughter, and my mother wasn't born into ladyship, so it's second-hand nobility you're speaking to. You don't have to lady me, my prince. Alright, if you say so. So are you here because your mother asked you to come against your will? Yes, that's exactly why I'm here. Because I'm a good girl who's willing to play her part. In that case, wouldn't you believe it if I said the reason why I'm here? It's not that different from yours. I guess you could call it. A family obligation? Yes. Although my oppressive parent is here in spirit alone, his legacy is omnipresent. His influence palpable. I thought the wine tasted funny. Um... <laughs> Ew! Oh, you don't have to play that shocked look on me. If you're anything like me, and your father was even slightly similar to my mother, a joke like that won't make you blink. You're right. Having spent all my life among people trained to keep up appearances, I picked up all the con conventional reflexes. Like acting shocked when someone's making a joke about your dead parent. Even though everyone knows... He wasn't as good a father as he was a king. I feel lucky already. At least nobody ever forced me into a mold of politeness. I shudder at the thought of someone trying. Such a silly concept, this politeness. Lying to each other in the name of good manners. As if honesty was a vice. You're a very original young woman. You know that. Isn't original one of those categories physicians use when they lock you up in an asylum? <laughs> Technically, I think it's innovative. Am I? And I am serious. I am glad you're here. I'd love to get to know you better. Oh, sure. Look around. I must shine like a real gem in this murky waters of lies and intrigue. Pure and innocent, like the morning breeze. Oh, how lovely it must be to be royalty and speak like that all the time, rather than just when you've had too much wine. Are you drunk? Is that what's happening? You think so? Unfortunately, I really don't care that much for polished speak coming from anyone who probably wants something from me. As you can see, I'm not really queen material. I'm too stupid to roll over anything, so hold that flood of appreciation and keep the flattery to yourself. Thank you. You may be many things, but you certainly don't seem stupid. Yes, yes, my wit exceeds my even my beauty. Listen, I don't care, all right? I don't want to be here. Nothing you can say will change that. Actually, I think I'm just going to go now. I've done my job, made a conversation, I've beaten Gl I mean, my sister. I think it's time to finish this. 
So take care, um, Prince. Nice ball and everything. What the? Heavens, this ball is turning into a madhouse rather rapidly. Too bad, though. This one I started to like. I knew it! Alright. I'm almost there and already. I love the little signers effect. Time to make my grand entrance. Oh my gosh, I'm so pumped! I cannot even tell you! A complete and utter disaster. You have no idea how much all of this will cost our family. You had a chance to secure the future for yourselves. And for your children and their children, you'll be very lucky to find a single man in the kingdom. And for your children and their children, you'll be very lucky to find a single man in the kingdom willing to court you after the display you gave tonight. And good riddance. What did you just say? Mother, look, there's a commotion in the ballroom. I think someone important has arrived. Indeed. Whoever that is, they can afford to be late, so I'm guessing it really has to be someone important. It's gonna be me! It's gonna be me! Because I'm a very important person. Everyone has gone silent. What is going on? <gasps> it's me! This is not the outfit I was wearing at the beginning of the game. <laughs> okay, looks like we have a latecomer, and an interesting one at that. That is a mighty fine dress. Wait, is that... I think I know her. Oh, oh, whoops, wrong person. I don't applaud her lack of punctuality, but she certainly knows how to make an entrance. Who is she? I don't think punctuality is among the twalk... Top qualities expected from a future queen. Ooh, I got an achievement ball gown. Ironically, not wearing the ball gown that's in there, but still. What about the stunning looks? Not a prerequisite, but then again, neither is courage, and this one clearly has plenty of both. Watch out, Prince. She's coming. Good evening, your highness. And to you too, Captain. Good evening, my lady. Now, if you'll please excuse me, my prince. Good evening, my lady. I have noticed you only just arrived. I hope you're not offended by my late arrival, Prince. Why is this a choice thing, too? I don't know. I hope you're not offended by my late arrival, Prince. These halls are so magnificent and tastefully arranged that it would be a crime to disrupt their harmony by careless attire. Not at all, my lady. It often takes an outsider's perspective to make us realize the beauty we have grown accustomed to. Especially if it is ta especially if it is tangled with memories, not equally beautiful. I agree. From my experience, people tend to use beauty as a mask for pain. I guess these fine halls are no exception. Whoa. Hold on. All right. Neither is exquisite wardrobe. Look around you, my lady. The people you see, beautifully dressed and smiling radiantly, do you think they are happy? They remind me too much of my own family for me to risk claiming that they're happy. Who would have suspected such a young and serene woman to have such painful experiences? <laughs> now, who would have expected it from a prince? One would rather imagine him leading a life of bliss. A sharp remark. Indeed, it can be blissful as long as it is ignorant. In truth, a monarch is a servant as much as a ruler. Actually, that's very smart. Good job. Way to read philosophy. Crown or not, a king is just a man, equally dependent on circumstances and others' expectations, like the rest of us. It raises an interesting question. Since the king and the commoner differ so slightly, shouldn't the people be allowed to rule themselves? I see you're quite the revolutionary. Did you secretly hope to overthrow me? Why, no, there's nothing secret about it. Besides, rumor has it your highness is planning a revolution of sorts himself. I must admit, you are an intriguing young woman, my lady. Very different from the rest of the people who came here today. They don't seem to have be even slightly bothered by the masks that they have to wear. I wonder if it's so because they wear them every single day as well. But you are different. 
You may be wearing a mask, but you speak to me plainly and honestly, risking being misunderstood or simply rejected. I can appreciate that, even if you did leave me a bit flabbergasted. I know exactly what you mean, Your Highness. Being raised in a place filled with deceit and spite, I learned very well the value of masks. When threatened, people will rather forget who they are than risk being hurt, and if their surroundings require it, they will lose themselves forever, only to survive. We are all slaves to convention, from a servant to a lord. I must admit I find the dictum terrifying, that all of us are merely actors on some stage set out for us, or actors in a visual novel, what what? Be it others or fate, being determined by things we can't control is frightening. I know it all too well. You speak of your family? I am. It isn't a light story, your highness. Definitely not a topic for polite and charming conversation to make the time pass more pleasantly. I would like to hear about it nonetheless, or nevertheless. If I am not asking for too much, please tell me about your family, my lady. How could I refuse you, my prince? Well, my mother died in labor, bringing me into this world. My father eventually remarried a woman who already had two daughters. He died soon after that, so... Now I live with a stepmother and her two daughters. That is strange. I've never heard of a noble house with three daughters and no father. I recall one family of a widow with two daughters, though. How is it possible, my lady? Car, you mean stepmother doesn't see me as one of her daughters. <laughs> nice catch. I'm sure he knows who it is, if he thought about it. She allows me to stay in her house under one condition. I work as a servant for bed and board. Those who are familiar with the family know of my existence. As for others, I wouldn't be surprised if she told everyone she has two daughters and that was that. That's unbelievable. I did warn you about this topic. It isn't very entertaining. No, I'm glad you told me about it. It showed me how ignorant I still am and how little I know about my own realm. Well, in that case, I'm glad you asked me about my life. Like, I realize he's supposed to know all the families, but come on, it's a kingdom. You can't know everybody. Look at me babbling like a lunatic. You must be wondering whatever happened to my royal manners. I force you to speak about things which you must find painful during a ball. When we're supposed to be taking our minds off unpleasant things. Please, allow me to make amends. Would you do me the honor? Oh, I'm not really a dancer. Don't worry, my lady. I will show you. Oh, I'm so excited. I love <gasps> dancing. This is very intimate. What? Our, like, our lips are close. I feel bad for Peralt if he... I mean, he must know who I am. Who else has this color hair? All right. Maybe I can learn something from you as well, my prince. Is this all right? You're doing fine, my lady. Look at us little swaying. This isn't as difficult as I expected. Not that I had expected to be dancing with you, my prince. And yet, here we are. It feels very natural, too. Who knows, maybe it was fate that brought the two of us together. I used to think about fate in a similar way, until someone told me sometimes one's fate is to decide how fate should be altered. Even though the most important things in life are given, and we have little or no say as far as they're concerned. Here we are, back at the not-so-pleasant comment, uh, or topic of necessity and determination. Terrifying, I remember, but in truth, isn't it all we are? Decisions we make regardless of fate? When we ignore the fact that we don't and can't know what awaits us in the future? Commentary on the game. Even if it means ignoring possible consequences of our actions, about which we know nothing? Yeah, even then. What good is worrying about outcomes which can't be foreseen, prices no one can yet estimate? Some things are set and fixed. Everything else is up to us. All we can do is decide how to act in spite of that. Yes, it is exactly what I have been repeating to myself. This may not be the wisest thing to say at the moment, but I'll say it anyway. I consider myself lucky to have met you tonight, my lady. Luck or not, I'm glad as well. Very glad to be here with you, Prince. Have I complimented your eyes already? Strange, I, I can't seem to remember. Neither can I. <laughs> Let's assume you haven't. I can't get enough of looking into them. They have these amazing dancing sparks inside of them. They suit you more than well. They speak of wit and intelligence. 
Now, I'm sure you haven't complimented my eyes. <laughs> Jeez, I like it. Please do continue. What else do you find attractive? I will then. I adore watching your lips as well. They move so gracefully when you speak as if conveying a promise. What promise have you read from them? I dare not say it. Let's move on. Your neck. Skip the neck, prince. What about my chest? Oh my gosh! PG, please! Chest is not a word that I'd use. And what word would you prefer? I... I think we should get to know each other better before we switch to a more colloquial... Colloquial vernacular. I'd love to get to know you better, my lady. You'll have your chance, my prince, if you're persistent enough and constant in your ambition. But we tend to undervalue things we achieved effortlessly. Let me give you an obstacle, my prince. You may thank me later. Although you know what stinks, I've already agreed to go away with Peralt. And what's interesting is he loves me anyway without the fairy enchantment of seducing the prince. Which I like. I like that I don't have to seduce him in order to, like, get with him. You really are incredible, my lady. And you wouldn't have it any other way, my lord. Good night, and thank you for this unforgettable evening. I dance with the prince, I dance with the prince. What you gonna do about it? Nothing, Carmosa. Your daughters didn't do as well as I did. Although Sophia could have, probably. Maybe not as good, because I was more gentle. It says Lady Carmosa. Mother is that? Do they mean Gloria? Well, I'll be. Cinders! Carmosa? Girls? Are you enjoying the ball? I certainly am. Oh my gosh, she is about to kill me. Brazen little brat. How dare you come here? Show off in front of the prince like some harlot. Steal his attention away from my daughters. Oh, really? Because the girls were doing so well on their own. You know, I think it's always easier to be charming and make a good impression on people when you're relaxed and confident about what you're doing. I came here out of my own will, Carmosa, while your poor daughters only came because they either fear or don't want to disappoint you. Little? They came because they know it's important. They came because you put the weight of your sick ambition on their shoulders and whipped them to make them go faster. The fact that you can't see your mistake makes you, your failure all the more tragic. I? Perhaps I was mistaken. I doubt she'd do that. Like, really? She'd be so pissed. Because, like, she spent so much money on this. Anyway, Cinders, you really were amazing. Yeah, not bad. Not bad at all. Thanks. <laughs> so, what are you going to do now? Got any more surprises for the evening? If you do, then please warn us in advance or someone may have a heart attack. Surprises? What do you expect me to do? I'll just head back home. I got what I wanted, right? Besides, these shoes are killing me. What are they even made of? Blasted thing. It's the left one that's almost cut my skin. Let's see if I can send you flying over the wall, shall we? There. And stay there. <laughs> what? Am I allowed to just throw shoes in the royal palace without any of the million guards being concerned? I'll be going now. Take care, ladies. And there she went. Well, I'd say this has been an entertaining and a very educational experience. What do you think, Gloria? Yeah, I think I did learn something about myself. All of us, actually. Would you agree, Mother? A mistake. <laughs> Looks like someone has just been hit with a revelation. Too bad it wasn't sooner. Hello, Peralt! Good evening, Lady Carmosa. Ladies, I'm looking for cinders. Do you know where I could find her? Uh, <laughs> my lady? Cinders is not here, Captain. Could you tell us why you're looking for her? Royal orders. The prince would like to have a word with her. Cinders has just left, Captain. She seemed to be in a hurry, too, as if trying to get back home before midnight. Funny, since Mother's here and she wasn't supposed to be here at all, it isn't like she needs to be back before curfew or anything. That lovely dress was as terrible as her shoes. Maybe she just wanted to get back home and take it off as soon as possible. Her shoes? 
Yes, slippers. Very original design, too. She said they were awfully uncomfortable and threw one over the wall. The other one is still here on the ground. Slippers. What? What? What is the drama with the slippers? Is the prince in love with me already? I knew it. I knew it would happen this way. Yes? I still can't believe she did it. I would never suspect. Of course. Because everyone's as dim what it is you and never does anything out of the ordinary or unexpected. Oh yes, I'm sure you were able to see this as precisely as it happened. Did you see it in tea leaves or read it in a children's book one afternoon while avoiding work and being useless as usual? I did entertain the thought she might do something like this, if you must know. But believe what you want. I don't care. Oh, was this where the ending was? I, too, suspected she might try to do something unthinkable. She was so secretive and compliant at times. I suppose it could point to an inevitable explosion. I just didn't expect she had it in her. Gloria, please, sometimes you sound like a cliché villain from a bad romance novel. Of course, if something's not twisted, weird, or shocking, you won't consider it honest. Not everyone is like you, Sophia. I know not everyone is. You're not, though you try hard to be like mother. Predictably boring and stupid. Um, yep, we read this before. They're fighting. We're opening up in the name of the prince. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Open up. Open up. I want Peralt to come get me. I'm so excited. <laughs> Let the noisy man in. Okay, yes. Uh, Captain, what brings you here at this time of night? Spare me the false pleasantries. You know why I'm here. Where is she? Okay, so I need to arrive. Okay, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. You know this isn't a courtesy visit. I'm afraid a lot is going to change here tonight. I brought cinders. Good evening, Captain. What a surprise to see you here. It shouldn't be. Were you present at the Grand Ball tonight? Now answer me honestly. I... Yes, Cinders. Yes. Yes, I was, Captain. Then I am afraid I must arrest you. <laughs> what? Because <laughs> I didn't come with an invitation? Oh, this is hilarious. Oh my gosh, Gloria and Sophia are standing up for me. What? This is weird. Attendance? Oh my gosh, because I didn't have an invitation. <laughs> Is considered an action endangering the prince. Well, well, attendance without a genuine invitation. Cinders, how could you have done such a thing? Oh my gosh, yours were fake too. Don't even start with me, lady. But I haven't done anything to endanger the prince. Surely you must take that into consideration when you decide my case. I don't know what your reasons were, but that is to come out during questioning. Royal justice has never been known for its soft approach to traitors, my dear. Lady Carmosa, please refrain from commenting. I would like to make this as easy as possible for everyone. Very well. Girls, let this man do his duty. I wasn't saying anything, you old hag. Oh, I can't believe she just said that. But Cinders, why did you do it? Breaking the law doesn't sound quite like you. I guess it's too late to wonder about that now, isn't it, Captain? I never could quite understand. And uh, stand her? Yes. And now she has simply crossed the line. If you must take her, take her. Know that this house respects the royal law. Senders, I am going to arrest you now. Don't do anything stupid. I'll escort you from here and make sure everything is as it should be. You'll be fine. I promise. Oh, he's so sweet. You're very kind, Captain, but there's no need for that. She's accustomed to hard treatment, so she'll manage. And let's not forget, she did endanger the prince. Yes, I can see what one may or may not be accustomed to here. Would anyone else like to try to tell me how to do my job? No? Good. Cinders, are you ready? How can I be ready for my own arrest? But, yeah, do what you must. I get the feeling you might be the lucky one, Cinders, actually breaking free from all this family business. If a guard asks you whether you're not you're ready to be arrested, I want to trade places with you. <laughs> what? Sophia! Can we go now, Captain? 
In the name of the prince, I am arresting you. Now follow me. Good night, ladies. Captain? What's going to happen to her? It was so rash of her to break the law. Gloria, you are officially a cliché idiot. Besides, wasn't that all unusual? Yes. Do you hear my little tinkling of my choices? <gasps> I'm running away with Peralta. I'm so excited. What do you think, my dear captain? Was I convincing enough? <laughs> you were perfect, Cinders. That was quite a performance. That's good to hear. I was improvising. You caught me by surprise, you know. How about cueing me next time you plan on putting my acting skills to the test? For a moment there, I was actually wondering whether you'd really come to arrest me. There wasn't much time to come up with a better plan. I was improvising myself. However, seeing how well you'd coped, I'd say it was the better. Or it was for the better. Not that it matters. I informed His Royal Highness about my decision to quit that service. And Cremosa shouldn't suspect anything. At least for a while. I reckon it should give us enough of an advantage to get far away from here. We're on the run. I won't lie, I'm a bit nervous. Are you? Yes, I am. But about a different thing altogether. Escaping is only the beginning. I'm wondering about what our life will look like afterwards. I know we talked about it, but it's different than from actually standing here, looking at the road and wondering what lies ahead. It won't be easy, that's certain. But what really matters is that we're breaking free. From now on, we'll be able to actually decide about what we do with our lives. Maybe we'll find a quiet town to settle in, or maybe we'll become a pair of famous adventurers. No matter. The point is, it's going to be something we actually want to do. Instead of having others tell us what we should be doing. Yes. And the best part about this new life is, even if it's bad, not really satisfying or fulfilling, at least it's something we chose ourselves. I, for one, can say life so far hasn't been the best of all the possible lives, and I know exactly whom I can thank for it. <laughs> Why did I say shank? I apologize. But the tricky thing about blaming others is that it doesn't really change anything, save our own level of comfort. It's easy to say things are beyond our reach. The way you speak about freedom, Cinders, it makes me think it was actually worth it to abandon everything and just go chasing after this dream of yours. My dear Captain, the way I see it, there is nothing else worth chasing after. So, what will it be? A life of adventure and risk, or comfort and routine? Call me an old fool, but unlike some younger people I know, I'm not that swift to forget about the man I've been all my life. I haven't yet said farewell to him. I know I'll miss the palace, my service, my prince. Even if it was all a facade. Facade. <laughs> Do you, have you guys played that game? It's intense. <laughs> For a lonely life. You won't be alone anymore. Yes, there's that. I meant to speak to you about that. About us. I'd like to know where I stand when it comes to our relationship. I can't blame you for asking. The truth is, I've been wondering that myself. We simply don't know each other that well enough to decide, I think. What we do now, however, is that we share common goals and a certain disregard for those who break the rules important to us. Well said. You did manage to understand me better than I understood myself. Who knew we could have so much in common? So, whatever the future may bring, whatever happens to us... Let's leave it in the future's domain. Exactly. What's important is that as long as we're together, we can protect and support each other. About that, you are right, my friend. Say, aren't you curious what's behind that curve? I'm dying to find out. Let's go. Hopefully you aren't actually dying, Cinders, and that the fairy is not going to collect on you immediately. No, not the suspicious character. No! Blasted liars. Schemers everywhere. Naive like children. I swear on me out here, you're going to pay dearly for y'all, miss. <gasps> Lady of the Lake! Oi, easy there, lady. You might have given an old shady a heart stopper. Never getting tired of those big entrances, eh? Always loved a good drama, you lot. Never got used to it myself. You have entered our domain. What do you want? Easy with that drama already. Don't mean no harm. Honest. Was well, just wondering, you see. Whatever happened to the witchy little bird that got on you old gals so agitated recently? 
Had you made some long-term investments in her, too? You speak of things which do not concern you. They don't. I thought I did a mighty fine job of fetching and whispering, basically being in all the right places at all the right moment. Are you telling me that my fairy godmother betrayed me because I will be so ticked off? Wouldn't dream about stealing light from you gals, but doesn't a supportive actor deserve some fresh rumours right from the source? Very well. Know then that all went well and the girl picked up the thread of fate where her mother left it. We have renewed the concord and the cycle will resume. We found the girl to be much like her mother. She remembered and embraced the gift of the lake. She accepted the weight and agreed to pay the price. Offered her one of your special favors, did you, love? Yes. Ha <laughs> ha! You gals are killing me. Be calm at our sanctuary or we shall speak no more. Oh, pardon me, ma'am. I just have this medical condition, see? Makes me cringe and twitch when I hear crazy, and you gals are the craziest. <laughs> what? How has no one, like, turned him into a toad? From what I gathered, the bird accepted no weight. Hard to fly with the weight, see? And flying's all she wants, that one. No, my dear ladies, fancy dress or no dress, she would have reached the prince or king, whatever she wanted. Much too driven and dependent to be intimidated by titles, she is. She received our aid and succeeded. Not really, no. She was already a winner when you decided to have the little chat with her. And then another, mess with her head and dull her wit. But she's much too sharp, that one. Say, ever thought maybe it was to her you used? You, love. Climbed your schemes like a ladder, reach her own goal. Her blood called and she responded. She re performed rites and honoured the lake. She's mature and see, memory means nothing then. In time she'll forget all about you, take your mirage for a dream. Don, I'm not so sure if you're real myself. <laughs> you are mistaken, old man. Memory is everything. She will remember and honor the agreement. She is just like her mother. Old poor woman, that one, eh? So wise, faithful and devoted to your way she was. Pity you didn't care that much for her. Some would call you killing an ugly way of thing, saying thanks. You killed my mom. That's so rude. Not the nicest thing to do to someone who loved you so much, eh, gals? Ain't many of those around more, am I right? Silence. Be gone, old snake. You have disturbed our domain for too long. No oh, impressive trick. Just like the old days. Still have enough figure in ye. Must have hit your sweet spot. You're gross. I always wondered why didn't any of the good kings chop your woods for forges and houses. Must have something to do with your charm and personality, eh? You are not welcome here. We wish to be left. Well, don't worry and save your strength, love. Cause soon no one will be disturbing you any more. And you will be alone. All alone. Oh no! Glass slipper, yay! I don't know what that means, but I like it. Ending. What? Finding happiness and freedom in her own birth- Oh, okay, good. Was that meant to be for Cinder, so I might have found it somewhere else. Sick of her life and her stepmother's game, she decided that the only way to find peace was to escape town and start her life over. Though her travels didn't spare her hardship, she finds a sense of her newly found freedom invigorating and is ready to take on whatever life throws at her. At least she's not alone. Captain Peralt decided to leave his old life of duty and take his chance by escaping with a curious girl he hardly knows. They become a pair of adventurers, living short, a short but intensive life that will be lauded in tales and songs for years to come. She thinks of her old family sometimes, but receives no news about their circumstances. She can't help but wonder what happened to Lady Carmosa and her daughters. These moments of nostalgia quickly pass, though, when she realizes that she lives a new life now, one that would be impossible if she decided to stay. That What? That's it? That's the ending? I don't get a special cutscene or a pretty drawing. Are you serious? <sighs> well, the ending was kind of a letdown. I mean, did Perel even... Was he even romantically interested in me? I don't even know. So I'm going to figure this out, but I hope you all enjoyed. I'm going to go and seduce some princeliness 
um, and see what kind of queen I can be. So I hope you all are good. I hope you stay sweet. Let me know what you thought in the comments section. I'll see you on the next episode. Bye!